Welcome to our final section, part four, all about how to support your child or teenager with their sleep. Our final section is going to be looking at the core principles of improving your teenager's sleep. My name is Dr Caroline Gibbs and I'm clinical psychologist at the Children's Wellbeing Service for South West London and St George's. So there are a number of physiological and behavioural changes associated during adolescence and these changes will more often than not have a direct impact on your teenager's sleep pattern and this means that they tend to start needing a bit less sleep on average about nine hours a night. Their circadian rhythm and their body clocks shifts also during a period in adolescence. This is temporary but it means that they naturally want to fall asleep a bit later and wake up a bit later. During adolescence teenagers may often find that their bedroom becomes a bit more of a bed sit than a bedroom. And if possible, it's helpful if their bed can only be kept for sleeping. So if you do have space, we recommend providing somewhere other than a bed to sit on, such as a chair, beanbag or a comfortable rug. So we covered this in our first video, but as a reminder, we know that a good night's sleep has a range of positive benefits for us at any age, but particularly during adolescence, because these benefits can provide extra resilience during what can be a confusing or difficult time. A good amount of good quality sleep will increase alertness, focus and your teenager's ability to think clearly, which obviously becomes a bit more important as they move through the school years and have exams and the workload increases. It also allows their body the chance to rest and repair, which is particularly helpful if, you're, if your teenager is quite sporty or active. It also allows them to be in a better position to manage daily stresses and to regulate their emotions more effectively and good sleep also can help to lift their mood. We also know now that good quality sleep can help people to maintain healthy weight. And perhaps particularly important during adolescence, it can help the way we want to communicate and get on with our family members if we're getting a good night's sleep. So how can you support your adolescent to improve their sleep, sleep routine? Well, there's a number of things that might help. One of the main things, and perhaps one that you've already had debates with at length, is about their screen time. We know that most electronic gadgets emit blue light, which is proven to stop melatonin, and this further delays sleep. Ideally, your teenager wouldn't use a screen in the hour up to bedtime, but if they're really struggling to self-regulate this and it's consistently having a negative impact on their sleep, it might be important for you to put some boundaries in place around this. So one example of this might be that everyone in the family, including yourself, will leave your screens downstairs in the drawer 30 minutes before bedtime. Research has shown that teenagers who have an average of four gadgets in their room lose half an hour sleep a day. And over a week, this amounts to three and a half hours and potentially a bit of a grumpy teenager. It might also be helpful to educate your teenager or guide them to some information about the changes that are occurring to their body clock and to discuss how you could support them. It's important to try to be empathic and supportive about this change. Remember that they didn't choose to have this change happen in their body and they didn't choose that school times haven't adapted to match this. A teenager who is sleeping a bit too late can try and shift their body clock earlier and we recommend that they do this gradually, usually at about 15 minutes a day rather than suddenly trying to shift things. And a good sleep routine in the lead up to bedtime is just as important for teenagers and adults as it is for younger children. So there are certain things you can do to support sleep. It's important to remember that you shouldn't force yourself to sleep. So if you've gone to bed and you're not asleep within about half an hour, we rec recommend getting up for about 15 minutes to do something calming. So this might be reading or drawing, not going on screens and then trying again and continuing to do this until you go to sleep. If worries are making it hard for your teenager to sleep, encourage them to write these down so that they can problem solve them either on their own or with your support in the morning. And we have a video on our YouTube channel all about how to support your teenager with anxiety. And we also have a video for teenagers themselves on this. On the next slide, we're going to show one of our short videos that we've created for teenagers, which demonstrates how they can use relaxation techniques to support with sleep. And you might also find this helpful for you. We've also got a couple of other videos specifically on sleep for teenagers on the channel. So one is our top tips for teens, all about getting a good night's sleep. 
And we also have one on resetting their body clock if they're finding that they're getting out of sync with what's the demands of the next day. And here's the video. We hope you found that video helpful and that it might be something you want to direct your teenager to watch. There are a couple of other things that can help your teenager with sleep. Research has shown that there are certain foods that contain a chemical called tryptophan, which the body then converts to serotonin. This has a number of many important roles, but one of which being that the body clock directs this to convert the serotonin to melatonin, which is our sleep hormone, to enable sleep. Here we have a list of foods that contain a high level of tryptophan and they're usually best eaten as an afternoon snack or an evening meal so that the body has time to process the food. So here are top tips for teenagers getting a better night's sleep. So as we said, a bedtime routine is really important for older children, adolescents and adults and to be consistent with this and use it every night. So this might involve a chance to wind down, maybe a shower or a bath, some reading, or maybe listening to a po podcast or audio book, and then off to sleep at the same time each night and trying to wake up at the same time each morning, including weekends, although we know that this becomes more difficult as your children get older. It's also important to ensure that the bedroom is a pleasant and calming place. If your children, if your adolescent is getting tired in the day, we still recommend that they really try their best to avoid daytime napping. It's best to try and stay awake and go to bed at a normal time to reset your body clock rather than nap, because then you end up usually needing to go to sleep later again that evening and the cycle continues. As always, we know that exercise and eating well really helps with our sleep and particularly avoiding caffeine before bed. So not just tea and coffee, but chocolate, energy drinks, protein bars, all those sorts of things that also have caffeine in. If it's possible, we recommend that your adolescent only uses their bed for sleeping, so not to do homework or chilling out, that if there is a separate space they can do this, 
that will be better. And remembering not to fall asleep. So if your adolescent isn't asleep after about 30 minutes, it's actually better to get up and do something else for about 15 minutes. And then once they start to feel sleepy again, going back to bed. OK, so here is a link to our YouTube channel. And if you can't type the link in, you can just search children's and children and young people's wellbeing service into the YouTube search box. We've got lots of videos on there all about supporting children and adolescents with their mental health. And we've got a couple of new videos specifically on there for adolescents for themselves, including three on sleep. So we hope you find these helpful. Thank you for joining. <laughs>